Monday, July 8th, regular meeting of the town council. If I uh, could have the roll call by the town clerk, please. Chairman Roberts. Present. Councilor Berry. Here. Councilor Carson. Here. Councilor Fritz. Here. Councilor Lynch. Here. Councilor McGinty. Here. Councilor Swift Kayata. Here. Manager McGovern. Here. And town clerk present as well. Present. Could we have a salute to the flag, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. If you'd like, uh, why does anybody remain standing for just a second, as we can give just a, a brief moment of silence for a good friend of Cape Elizabeth, who recently passed away. Thank you, everyone. And thank you very much, Jim Murray. Noticed most everybody has already taken off their coats. Henry, we're, gonna, we're on summer decorum here. If you'd like to drop your coat as well, I, I think this is summer coat. It's a summer coat. All right. Yeah. I guess Anna, you can, and you're welcome to take yours off as well if you'd like. Thank you, Jack. <laughs> I'll consider it. All right. Um, reports and correspondence. And any, does anyone have anything they'd like to share with us this evening? What, uh, appointment. Oh, uh, it's it's an item on the agenda. Okay. Council Fritz. Um, I'd just like to report that I had the privilege of leading a group of uh, Russian, um, I think, people in municipal government there uh, through our town transfer station. Um, two years ago, I also uh, led a group um, of Ukrainians. So word has spread around the world uh, how, how our transfer <laughs> station operates, and, and um, they came to see how it worked. So they, they were interested in, in municipal government in general. Uh, and this was one of the places that they came to visit. So very nice. Anyone else? Seeing none. Uh, Councilor McGinty, you want to be the last uh, one I can tell. No. Um, on June 18th, I believe it was, I attended the uh, Greater Portland Council of Government's General Assembly, annual sem assembly meeting. Um, not much to report from that except for one bit of good news. They've changed the due structure, which actually um, is favorable to Cape Elizabeth. They changed it from a straight 10 grand to based on population because we're around 9,000, give or take. It sounds like we might get about a $1,000 break on our COG mm. dues. So that's the good news that came out of the meeting. There was no bad news. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Town manager. The bad news is we got the COG bill today. <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, wanted to thank everyone. We recently closed our fiscal year on June 30, and uh, it, it went extremely well. I'd like to thank uh, Deborah and the school staff who works on that, particularly for the help in all the departments. Also, you, you mentioned uh, Jim Murray passing away, and I, uh, I could go on at length about Jim, but I, I won't do that this evening. But I do want to recognize and thank all of the, the different department heads and staff members who assisted uh, with, with various uh, functions relating to the funeral and the preparations and some of those issues. Uh, everyone uh, did chip in, and I know Carol Murray and the family uh, indicated to me uh, their appreciation as well for all of the efforts of everyone, so uh, thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. Anyone interested in speaking this evening? Seeing none. The, uh, we have a approval of the minutes for the uh, one meeting of uh, June 2. So moved. June, June 10, excuse me. I've got 10203 on here. Why do we have that? That's the first meeting. First meeting. Okay. I'll second it. Thank you. <laughs> moved it. I moved it. We have a, uh, it has been moved and seconded. Yes. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Anyone opposed? Shall it be unanimous? Action on the item number 170203, action on the good table liquor license and related licenses. I don't see anyone this here this evening from the uh, good table. I thought they were going to be, but uh, can we have a motion perhaps to for that? I move that we approve the li liquor license for the good table restaurant. 
Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Anyone opposed? That's unanimous as well. Item number 150203. Speak of the devil. <laughs> We're on item Tony, number three. Oh. We'll give you two seconds if you want to say something. It's already been approved. <laughs> you may. <laughs> Well, first of all, my daughter-in-law and I would like to thank the council, uh, the building committee, all the town offices that have rushed this whole thing through for us, and especially the, town, the people of Cape Elizabeth. They've been utterly magnificent, and uh, I just specifically came here to thank you all. That's it. You're welcome. Very well. <laughs> I'm pleased to report that your license has been approved. Oh, thank you, Tony. <laughs> You're all set. And for the uh, Tony, can you introduce yourself, introduce yourself officially, okay. whole name and address? Uh, my name is Tony Kostopoulos. Uh, I own the Good Table Restaurant with my daughter Lisa, and I live at 28 Broad Cove Road, Cable Thank you very much. Thank and good, you. good luck and best wishes. Item number 150203, a report from the Appointments Committee. Councillor Carson. The Appointments Committee has met to take up the applications uh, sent to the town for the Refuse Material Planning Committee. We have met and we have interviewed the uh, applicants and we have appointed the following applicants. Chuck Wilson, Jean Ginn Marvin, Allison Morton, Don Nelson, and Mike Maroon. And I ask the council to approve the slate, please. I second the motion to approve that slate. All right. Before, before further discussion, I might add that this was, item was tabled on June 10 to tonight's mm -hmm. meeting. Um, is there any discussion on the slate? I think we have to remove it from the table first. Does that have to be removed? You do have to remove it from the um, table. Uh, move the I'll, I'll learn the tricks of the trade eventually. <laughs> Can I have a motion then to, to move the item? I second. Table? I move, she second. By Henry. All in favor of moving from the table? Short to be unanimous. All right, now we can have a discussion. We've already had the motion, so. She moved, I second it. Is there any discussion on any of the, uh, of this proposal? The slate is presented. The slate is presented. Councillor swift Um I just would like to mention for people who are watching on television that there are some other people on the committee they include mm. recycling representatives Larry Glantz and Darren McClellan. The council representatives will be Penny Carson and Carol Fritz and Bob Malley as the public works director will be serving with this committee, just so everybody knows who the mm. whole committee Thank is. you. That is true. Well worth noting. Any further discussion? All in favor of the slate as presented? And again, you can show that to be unanimous. Item number 180203, report from the Fort Williams Advisory Commission regarding permitting, permitting uh, residents and Cape Elizabeth-based businesses to reserve the picnic shelter beginning on December 1st with other reservations to commence on January 1st. This was a report that was uh, given to, from the Fort Williams Advisory Committee to the Council for Action. Uh, and I think the item itself is self-explanatory. Can I have a, a motion? I move that we accept the recommendation of the Fort Williams Advisory Committee to, re that, to permit the citizens of Cape Elizabeth to reserve the picnic shelter beginning on December 1st with reservations to commence on January 1st for the general Let's public. Second that. And moved and seconded. Any discussion? Councillor swift Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, I would just like to add that it's not just residents, but it's um, also people uh, in, involved with Cape Elizabeth-based businesses that would be mm -hmm. permitted this earlier reservation system. That is true. Any for Henry, yeah, Councilor Berry? The Fort Williams Advisory Committee uh, is a hard-working committee, and this is a good idea uh, to give the uh, residents of the town uh, some consideration uh, before everybody else uh, gets in. I support the motion. 
Counsel, I, I guess just pointing out that then non-residents and businesses would be able to register starting a month later, January. January 1st, 1st right. right. All right. I guess I would add, just like to add myself as well that uh, I was pleased to see this motion come forward because what Williams obviously is a municipally supported uh, park. It is a jewel, and I, I'm really pleased to see our residents having first shot at uh, at the reservations. I think that's and before long we leave the subject of uh, the, uh, the hmm. fort, I would point out that the Portland Post Office uh, has a big mural of Portland headlight on the uh, main post office wall, appearing to come from Ca from Portland. When really I keep telling them it's Cape Elizabeth. <laughs> All right. Uh, so if we could have uh, a vote. All in favor of uh, accepting the recommendation from the Fort Williams Advisory Committee. Do I see any one opposed? So it to be unanimous. Item 190203. Mm -hmm. um, I think I would ask the town manager to give us a brief explanation of that one, if he would. Yes, for more than 20 years, the town has provided an appropriation to assist with nursing services in the community, particularly in terms of home visits for those who are who are unable to fully pay for them. At one time, the appropriation exceeded $20,000, uh, and it involved, uh, you know, considerable uh, number of home visits. Over the years, it declined, particularly as it was noted that community health services was receiving funds from a lot of other sources as well, and the numbers of uh, otherwise non-supported nursing services didn't hold up to that appropriation. Uh, in about the last six or seven years, VNA Hospice has become a much more active player in providing uh, home visits, uh, nursing care services to uh, Cape Elizabeth residents. And the last three years, I think they've put in a funding request. Uh, during the budget process this year, uh, one of the board members of VNA Hospice approached the council and approached me, and I understand approached the council, suggesting that maybe the appropriation ought to be more fairly allocated between community health services and VNA hospice to reflect the amount of actual service they were providing in Cape Elizabeth. In looking at the funding request of VNA hospice and of community health services, the only variable that appeared in both documents as to level of service and the quantification of the level of service uh, is the number of home visits. Uh, looking at it, VNA Hospice provides 65% of the home visits now, and Community Health Services has declined to 35%. So I would recommend that the Council allocate the appropriation uh, for nursing services of $5,000, 65% of that to uh, VNA Hospice and 35% to uh, Community Health Services. Is the Chairman Anyone prepared to make a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that we take of the $5,000 allocation that we have already budgeted for these services that we divide that and 65% goes to VNA and 35% of the $5,000 goes to CSH for this coming year. Second. Second. I'll let the clerk decide where that came from. <laughs> any, any discussion on this item from councilors? Councilor Barry? Uh, well, we just might mention that the percentages work out to dollar amounts of Seventeen hundred and fifty dollars mm -hmm. to CHS and thirty-two hundred and fifty dollars to VNA uh, for the dollar amounts. To Thank you very much. I was going to ask that we have the math included in there somewhere. Right. Any so, further discussion? All in favor of the proposed motion? And again, it is unanimous. Item t number twenty oh one oh two. I propose the acceptance of land donation from the estate of Fern A. Petty for lot U29-38. This has been before the council previously. Um, I would ask the town manager again if you could briefly uh, remind everyone what was happening here. Yeah, back on February 10th, the council accepted this gift, but at that point we had not been formally offered the deed. We have now been offered the deed. It is a 1.2-acre lot near C Stevenson Street, which is on the curve on Spurwink Avenue, right near the South Portland Line, Stevenson Street cuts off from there. Most of the lot is wetland, but it is uh, a key part of the green belt is adopted as a part of the adopted 2001 green belt plan. So I would uh, 
encourage the council to accept the deed and authorize it to be uh, filed at the registry. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Sir. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Anyone opposed? Are you unanimous? Item number 210203, proposed designation of driveway off Scott Dyer Road between Dr. Dickinson's office and Coldwell Beecher Honden Beecher office as Holman Road. And Great and name. Pardon? Great name. Great name. Great name. Uh, I'll have the town manager and explain who Mr. Holman was and a uh, little hmm. information on that one. Guy. Yeah, let me, before I do that, I would like to say this has been before the addressing committee, uh, made up of, which is made up of a couple of staff members, the assessor, the police chief, and the fire chief. Uh, Holman Road has been run by the, the person who owns most of the property in this vicinity, who's currently Gerald uh, W. and Sharon Murray. And Mr. Holman, uh, was the long time was a long time teacher at Cape Elizabeth High School, long time coach. Uh, the baseball field is already named uh, for Mr. Holman, and he resided uh, at the home next to the new police station, uh, now occupied by Sharon and uh, Jerry Murray. So uh, he's a deeply, deeply respected person in Cape Elizabeth. And, uh, it's felt since his home uh, was part of this overall parcel uh, that it might be nice to uh, name this. Uh, who would like the honor? I so move that one. <laughs> second. And a second. Council. Any discussion on that item? Anyone that have anything further to say about Mr. Holman, perhaps? No? All in favor? Again, you can select it to be unanimous. Item number 220203, proposed updating of open space impact fee. And I guess the town manager needs to be the one to yeah, this, uh, the town council had originally adopted open space impact fee in 1995, and within that fee, it's based on population, household size, and the average value of an acre of undeveloped property. Uh, we did receive new census data in it, uh, following the 2000 census, and it now uh, is recommended to update this. Maureen O'Mara did an extensive review of it. Uh, the open space impact fee has been uh, $2,080 per lot if open space is not given, and it's proposed to increase to 4320 And I, I would like to point out that uh, no one has ever paid this fee. Uh, in, in each instance, they have uh, provided uh, very important uh, land donations in, in lieu of providing the fee. So uh, this has, has really worked well. And should anyone pay the fee it, under the provisions, it would go into a fund to uh, uh, help provide for purchases of uh, alternative open space. Anyone prepared to, to move this item? I'll move that the Cape Elizabeth fee schedule be changed um, to or section 16.3.1 to 12,545 square feet per lot unit for open space and then $4,000 $4,320 per lot per unit. Thank you. And do I hear a second? Second. Right. Who would like to begin the discussion on this one? I, just before, I, I'd like to clarify. We're not actually amending that section. It, the council would be setting a fee in conformance with that okay. section. Okay. Thank you. Can we leave the motion as is? I think Debbie probably caught it correctly. All right. She usually does. Okay. I don't see any discussion on this item. Okay, okay. No. Council Lynch. <laughs> I'll be voting against this item. I, uh, I guess I'm philosophically opposed to impact fees. Um, I think if we have a program or a service that benefits the entire town, as I believe this does, um, then we should not look to one group to bear an inordinate share of the cost of that. Um, I also, so I think it's bad government from that standpoint. I think it's also bad economics because it shifts the cost of this program to new housing and increases the cost of housing. Now, I know some people will say, well, the developers pay. But um, I suspect that every dollar of this, should it be paid, would go to the um, bottom line cost of a house in Cape Elizabeth. And I, I think it's also a slippery slope. There are towns that are talking about impact fees for schools 
and impact fees for other services and uh, I guess I may be in the minority on this but I, I have to say philosophically I'm opposed to it I think it's bad government and bad economics and so I'll be opposing this and voting against it any further discussion well I uh, I would disagree in in that there's a certain amount of open space per person in the town now and when you have new development come in, they would be, there would be more people using the current open space. And so rightly, the people in the new development would pay. Um, I mean, we haven't had people actually pay. Instead, they've provided open space. Uh, around the development and the people who actually benefit the most from the open space that's around a new development are the people who are in that development. So it seems a very appropriate to me. <clears throat> Thank you. I guess I would ask the uh, town manager, when we are, have been getting the open space, has it severely limited the number of houses that a developer could put on the lot, thereby potentially increasing the cost of houses? I don't... I, I can't answer that empirically. Uh, the you know, most of the developers in recent years have taken advantage of the cluster provisions of the ordinance. And in that, they have uh, reduced the amount of land consumed for housing purposes, and they've also lowered their cost of development because it's, it's a lot easier for them to build and for us to serve a cluster development than it is one of sprawl. So overall, you know, the system has worked well in terms of encouraging clustering and in terms of preserving really hundreds of acres of open space at this point. And, you know, and beyond that, I, I think as the, the, you know, as the two councillors have stated, uh, Councillor Lynch and Councillor Fritz, you know, it's a policy issue and it's a uh, philosophical issue, but uh, I, I can say that it's been very effective in uh, the a whole range of policies relating to preservation of open space have been effective in uh, preserving open space. Thank you. Councillor Lynch. And, and I, I think we have a number of policies that have been very effective. I, I'm very supportive of open space. Um, I would be, um, uh, I supported the council's acquisition or um, interest in, in helping the land trust last year. If really for me, it is the issue of the fairness of imposing it on one group. And, and I think, um, Councillor Fritz, the argument breaks down when you when you say well it's just people buying new homes because you can have the sale of an older home and a family of five or six move in and so you've increased the population of the town um, and I recognize this formula is based on town population so the formula doesn't really work when you think that um, the population of our town is not driven solely by new homes. Uh, I think the formula also is a little bit hokey in that it's based on the average value of one acre of undeveloped land at $15,000. Um, I'd certainly like to know where that $15,000 um, acre is in Cape Elizabeth. So, um, a, a, and again, it's more that philosophically uh, I, I recoil at it and I'm, uh, I guess I'm just staking this out because I would not want to see before us impact fees for schools or other services and uh, just a slippery slope sort of thing for me, so. Any further discussion? I, Town manager. I just want to explain the 15,000 undeveloped amount because, you know, it's like so many things, you throw a number out there and it, it face value, it sounds bad. If one looks at when someone buys a large piece of raw acreage, uh, much of it is wetland, much of it is rock outcroppings, uh, much of it ends up in roads and, and other infrastructure. Uh, for that reason, much of this raw land does sell for about 15,000 an acre. I would agree that when one thinks of a single buildable lot, uh, you know, one can expect it to pay considerably more than 15,000 in Cape Elizabeth, but there is an anchor for that 15,000 number and it has been actual sales of large parcels of undeveloped land 
all of which in the case of Cape Elizabeth have had some restrictions on their use because of wetlands and rock outcroppings and other issues. I just wanted to clarify that because otherwise those numbers get thrown out and mm -hmm. folks think that we're playing with numbers. <laughs> Thank and you. Rightfully so. <laughs> Any further discussion? Councillor McGinty. I'm going to support this. I, I think this fee specifically is directed towards open space, the, the preservation or, or the acquisition, the pre preservation of the percentage of open space in town and the acquisition of additional open space as the town grows. Um, and I think it's, you know, nobody's util utilized it yet, um, but I think it's, a, it's an effective way to try to maintain the open space in town. So I'll be supporting it. I'll be supporting it as well. Uh, eight years on the Conservation Commission trained me well that this is working and uh, it's a great policy. So I've got to, I've got to go back to my roots on this one. Are we ready to vote? All in favor of accepting uh, the motion? All opposed? Vote to be 6 1, Councillor Lynch. Uh, citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. For those of you who didn't speak at the beginning of the meeting, you have a, a second opportunity. And uh, I don't see anybody rushing to the podium. So I guess we can have a, a motion to adjourn. Uh, but I, before we do that, I guess I would note that following the town council meeting, the uh, council will be meeting as the board of directors of the museum at Paul and Headlight and the trustees of the Thomas Jordan Trust and that we will also be having a town council workshop on July 11 with the agenda to include Rock Graffiti, the Ralph Gould Award, and council goals. So, do I have a motion to adjourn? I had so moved. Second. All in favor? Thank you, councillors. Thank you, everyone, for bearing with us. Thank you. Stuck here. Unless you want to go to my office.